the, the signing sheet is right on the podium. Everybody is, um, everybody's public. But for the benefit of the audience, if everyone could also explain who they are when they get up there, because I don't know everybody. Thank you. Uh, no, no Kind of jam it over the top. Well, if you don't know by now, I'm J.T. Moffitt. Uh, you know, right following after Peter's comment and the comments from the building department there, uh, you know, and, and someone else mentioned how, you know, there's they've already changed some of this stuff. Well, I talked to Councilman Makata this week in, in, in at length on the phone. We have uh, we have tug of wars and real fun little uh, battles like in the old days with gladiators on the phone. And uh, he told me, well, what you don't know, Mr. Moffitt, is that, you know, Luis Garcia's already taken some of these severe penalties out of there. And he's taking this out, he's doing that, and trying to make it palatable for people. But what you don't know, Mr. Mercada and many of us, I know, because of Peter Wagner's, thank God, is that these codes are tied into the International Code Book. And I'm going to tell you straight up right here before God that that oh, supersedes anything in the Chapter 7 codes. Because they are directly tied into the International Code Book, it doesn't matter what they take out and erase, because the International Code Book is going to rule your lives in Benson, Arizona, if we adopt these codes. And don't forget that. Don't let them fool you with what they take out of the Chapter 7 codes, my friends, because the International Code Book is the one that we're going to have to live by. And we have no control over what they put in or take out. Once, they, once we adopt these codes, which I know we're not going to do, I know God is with us to defeat this, but once they try, if we, if we were to adopt these codes, the International Code Book would reign in Benson. Doesn't matter what our little, our little city codes say. If they want to enforce something, doesn't have to be in the Chapter 7 or Chapter 9 codes, my friends. If it's in the International Code Book, you're sunk. Don't forget that. Don't be fooled by the rhetoric and the propaganda coming from City, City Hall. If they want to enforce something, all they got to do is say, well, it says right here, refer to this part of the International Code Book. It doesn't matter if it says that the Chapter 7 codes are not. It doesn't matter that Mr. Garcia has taken these things out of the Chapter 7 codes. Don't forget this, whatever you do. We've been duped into believing that this is the only solution to our code issue. Now, first of all, I, I ask you as, as residents and business owners in this community to make a list of what you think is important in your life. I bet, I'll bet anything that the codes are not on that list. And yet, that's all we've heard about from City Hall and City Council for how long? It has become the number one thing we have to do in Benson or we're all going to die. And yet, look at all the things, the issues that are that are important to your lives. Why are we sitting here, you know, being lambasted with this that dire need? There's a reason, I know, I'm not going to get into it tonight, but it's because people in City Hall messed up, and now they're in jeopardy of being fined by the, by the government, what they call it a, not a fine, but uh, a lien. A, a lien. No, it's a... Uh, Something because because we're not we're not living up to our end of things. Okay? So what is it? Yeah, we're not in compliance. So we're gonna have to pay a penalty. Alright? So they want to avoid this penalty and someone got caught their pants down and so now we've got to pass these codes. Well I'm sorry. Okay? We're gonna have to suffer as a city because of somebody else's mistake. That's the way it is. Now I'm gonna ask you this tonight, folks. I don't care what they tell you in the, in the coming days and weeks and months. I don't care what they tell you is going to happen if we don't pass these codes. And they're going to tell you a lot of terrible things, a lot of scary things. Your homeowner's insurance is going to go up. All these terrible fines and levies and things from the federal government are going to happen. But let me ask you this. How much are your rights worth? Anybody here want to sell me your rights? Put a price on it. Put a price on your rights, folks. How much are they worth? That's what I want to ask you tonight. Because if, if you're going to sell your rights to save money, 
then I, I feel bad for you. Because I know myself and a lot of other people in this community will not sell their rights for nothing. And if it means we've got to take a hit and pay higher insurance or whatever it costs, I don't care. Look at our founding fathers. What did it cost them? Their lives, their freedom, for their rights. The Bill of Rights is tainted with the blood of patriots. And I'm going to tell you something. We need to stand firm no matter what scare tactics they throw at us and say, you figure it out. You cause the problem, you fix it. But don't put it on us to adopt this code and sell our rights. Because I, I can assure you one thing, and this election is so important for this very reason. If we get a new council in here, we're going back to the UBC codes. We're getting rid of this international building codes. I promise you that this is what I've heard from the candidates. We're going back to the UBC codes because those are safe. The builders know them. They know what's expected of them. We've got to update a few federal laws that come into path in the game since our last update. You know, nothing serious, nothing really drastic, nothing that's going to going to harm you or take anything from you. It's just some things like handicap things and stuff of, of that nature. No, I can talk for five, two more minutes, thanks. Nice try. I get two more minutes. I have a split personality. Anyway, so I want you to keep that in mind. All right, it's really important. You have to understand, since there's nobody following me at this point. Oh, yeah. There's oh, there's again. Okay. And then Ron. Well, oh, I didn't see any There's a bunch of people. <laughs> All right, anyway, keep I'll let go of that. Keep hey, thank you. All right, let me say one more thing. This probable cause thing, this is, this kills me. Probable cause is defined uh, right off the internet from Diane, thank you, that a crime has been committed. So how are they going to do that for a code violation? It's not a crime, right? It's a code violation. Let me tell you something, folks, because I love to use this example. If your dog poops on your lawn, you have committed an un unlawful act because you didn't follow behind with a scooper on your own property. If a neighbor complains about the dog poop on your lawn and insects, according to the way it's written and read it for yourself in your codes, insects are attracted to this dog poop, you have committed an unlawful act. You have committed a crime. Because of the way this is worded now, probable cause exists. You have committed a crime. Now, it gets better. The dog keeps pooping. I don't know how that happens. The dog keeps pooping on your property, okay? You don't run after it and pick it up all the time because you've got to work like a dog to pay your bills. Or you may be old and, and frail and you can't follow after your dog all day long. Now, you've had two or three complaints. The fine starts at $75, goes up to $750 now. Now, you are a habitual offender. I'm just reading it from the, from the code book. Read it for yourself. I'm not making none of this up. You are now a habitual offender. You have committed too many crimes. You are guilty of a class one misdemeanor. Punishable up to $2,500 and up to six months in jail for dog poop on your property. Okay, JP, let somebody else. Yeah, thank you, yeah. JP. <laughs> Saying you're working like a dog when all the dog does is lay around and poop on your property. Sign in, please. Put up my sign in sheet. Oh, okay, good. This is my junk. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I actually put some money in to have all cameras put in here so we could cover our meetings. People can have it in their homes. I really pushed for it. They took the money out and bought a bunch of toys with it. So, what can I say? Uh, I do have something to say. I'm not specifically on. Chapter 7. Uh, I think the Steve did a real good presentation on that to explain to you what that's about. Um, I think part of the other side of the story here is also that um, our town um, is, because of the recession, um, we're losing money every year here. It's been going downhill. We're, um, Mr. Cox, uh, he's a very good financier. Uh, he said that we may have to cut services here in this town this next budget. I don't think people are going to like that, especially employees, but we need to do something to bring business here. And this is a code, this code is a, is a business killer. It's going to take away, who wants to come to a town that they're going to be over-regulated? This is not going to happen. If we're going to do anything to try and bring business here, we need to go back to, like Mr. Moffat has said, go back to the UBCs, uh, uh, try and amend anything that the state requires of us. That's, this is my stand on this, by the way. Uh, 
Um, I believe that if we can start back and give the people more room to grow and, and open their businesses, that maybe someday, if things get out of hand, we can probably bring the toes and get a little stiffer. But right now, this is an analogy to me of like taking a baby and cleaning him up with chlorine, and he's clean, but he's dead. And that's exactly what's going to happen to this town if we do this. So my stand on this right now is to just take these codes and get rid of them, go back to the earlier codes we had, uh, comply with the state and local, uh, the county, whatever codes that we have to have to buy by, and then we can let business happen again. Thank you. Because he's not as long-winded uh, as you okay. are. Okay. <laughs> Next on the list is Paul Lotzoff. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, I guess this is radio. Uh, we have got your equipment at the radio station. So, uh, just a few things I'd like to mention, not necessarily about Chapter 7. One point on Chapter 7, we're not being told much about what the existing code says. Surely there must be some enforcement uh, proceedings allowed in that, too. So, uh, to find out what, what we've got right now. Uh, some of you have probably seen this booklet that I put out uh, some time ago, uh, supposedly a little over a week ago, a week ago on Monday, 1,500 of these were distributed. However, uh, I have absolutely no evidence that anybody ever got one, uh, 15, somebody did. <laughs> well, that's really reassuring. Uh, anyway, if you did, I'd like to hear from you. Okay, a uh, little bit of a couple of things about uh, what's in this booklet uh, and other things. Uh, you'll discover that there's a lot of uh, information here that you won't find anywhere else, or particularly about where the city spends its money. And uh, that, of course, is an extremely important part of local government, where the money's coming from and where it's going. And uh, a whole lot of things in here about how much people get paid and ridiculous salaries and others can rip offs like $1,500 or something like that to buy Halloween bags. Uh, where does all this come from? And what I'd like to mention to you people right now is that uh, there have been a couple of real interesting changes. One of the things that we, the members of the press, including both the newspaper and the radio station, in order to do our job right, we have to have what is called a city council packet. These are packets which are given about, oh, I'd say 60 pages, it might be more than that. And all members of the city council used to have these packets. And they were also given to the newspaper, and they were also given to the radio station. Well, a little $9,000 deal came along, and uh, the city council, and mostly at the urging of Councilman Lambert, uh, suggested that the uh, city council packets be replaced with uh, iPads. And they spent $9,000 to buy these iPads for the members of the city council. Uh, unfortunately, the radio station didn't get one, and neither did the newspaper, so this is an excuse to deprive us of our packets. So it makes it much more difficult for the news people to do our job without these packets. Uh, but anyway, this apparently is the decision we've made of the clerk, no more packets for the news media. Uh, we have to get our stuff from the internet. The other interesting thing is a brand new change which has just been made, uh, uh, and I pointed this out at the last city council meeting. In every city council packet, there is a list of bills that have been paid by the city finance manager, and uh, a big long list, and I got a lot of my information by having this information. But guess what, they made a big change. Now we are allowed to know who got the money, but we're not allowed to know where the money, what the money is for. In other words, Joe Jones has gotten $1,500, but why was Joe Jones given the $1,500? We don't know anymore. That change has been made. I brought this up to the city council at the last meeting, and of course they've ignored everything I said, which is what they always do. So, uh, <laughs> and they ignore almost everybody, every, everything that anybody else says during the city uh, public meeting. So anyway, this, these are a couple of things I would really like to see change. Number one, the, the press media, the newspaper, and I should be able to get these packets again. Because that's how we afford, that's how we can give the information to you people. And uh, secondly, we ought to know not only who's getting the money, but what it's for. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Diane Tipton. 
Hello. My name is Diane Tipton. A lot of you know me. If you don't know me, a lot of you know about me or about our lawsuit with the city. I am living proof that these things can be done to you. Some people think that we have some kind of how violated some city codes, which is not the truth. That is what you've read, that's what you've heard, but it is not the truth. We just got a very favorable Supreme Court decision. And the appellate court has been overturned. Judge Dessens, it was ruled that he did have jurisdiction, which is why the city took us to the appellate court. And they've given us a revenue by which we can collect our attorney's fees. And that is a big victory, not only for me and my son, but for this community. Because we were fighting for your property rights as well as our own. I want to just simply say thank you for being here. This